Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. In this installment of Fantastic Plastic, we'll be taking a look at some ways to easily create screw pockets and screw bosses using SolidWorks. So being able to add a screw pocket uh, by adding a cut before the shell is a great way of creating them, but what if I don't have access to the shell? Maybe it's imported geometry that I need to create screw boss on. So have no fear, there's another way of doing it. So here I'm creating a plane that is the distance where I want the screw pocket to start. And normally I would create a cut and then shell it, but I can't cut air, right? There's no material for me to cut at this point. So what I'm doing is modeling the internal volume of the screw pocket with a solid. So I'm actually, this is not going to be present in the model. Uh, make sure that the merge result option is off. You can see there's no uh, new edge generated here, so I have three solid bodies. And what I can do now is use the shell outward tool. So I have shell with my desired thickness, shell outward, and I'm just going to pick the top face of the screw pocket, make it go away. And so I've now essentially done what I had done in the previous example, which was cut and then shell, but here I created a cut uh, in the parentheses, but uh, actually I modeled the internal volume of that cut and then used the shell outward tool. So let's do the second one and now I'm using the intersect tool, super powerful for working with solids and merging them together. So I'm going to pick the three different bodies and I'll click intersect and then uh, in the graphics window I'll click the areas I don't want and they're going to be removed from the list. And so what this will do is automatically trim my screw bosses to size, merge them in, we see we have one body, and then I'll follow up with a cut to create the through hole for the fastener, and I'll finally follow up with uh, a fillet. Instead of applying a standard uh, edge fillet, I'm going to be using the face fillet tool here. The reason being is that the angle the fillet is applied to uh, kind of varies because this is not on a nice flat surface. And so a symmetric fillet's actually going to get bigger. You can see it's a little bit larger visually. It's the same radius all the way along. But I'd like to have a fillet that visually looks the same size. So to do that, I select the face fillet, and under the fillet method, I select cord width. And what this will do is apply a fillet that visually looks the same size, yeah, even though its radius changes a lot. So this is my preferred method of creating fillets that uh, you know visually look the same on and kind of angle fit. So this one, it would be an even more extreme example. Symmetric, you can see the fillet gets larger over here as its radius stays the same. The cord width visually looks the same size, but its radius changes. And a couple quick tips to finish up this installment of Fantastic Plastic. So here I have a plastic plastite screw that I downloaded from McMastercar, an excellent source of both uh, hardware and the corresponding CAD models. But I hate threads in these models. I want to get rid of the threads because the threads, I don't need them for anything. They're not going to help me in my design process and they're just going to slow down my assembly. It can also uh, cause some issues with interference detection as I get a whole bunch of interferences instead of a single interference for the screw going into the screw boss. So what I'm going to do is try and find the cut sweep uh, feature. McMaster actually accurately models their threads. So what I'm going to do is just suppress that cut sweep. Alternatively, I could have created a sketch on this plane and extruded a, a circle all the way up to here, and that would absorb the threads. So whenever you're downloading external models or they're a great helper in your design process and they speed up uh, creation of things. You, you, know, you want to have nice accurate or screws in your model, but get rid of those threads. And our final tip for today is using the design binder. So this is just a, a Dodge UltraCert insert that I, uh, I also got this model from McMaster, but I have suppressed all of the knurling and the threads uh, internal here. I didn't want those to slow down my assembly. Uh, but so I went to the Dodge website and I looked uh, at the actual design specs for this and I captured a screenshot and what I did was put it in the design binder. Uh, the design binder is hidden by default but if you go to options, I believe it's feature manager, you can have the design binder always show. 
So with the design binder showing, you can put in external content. I could put in a PDF or an image. But here, you always get this free Word document. So in this Word document, what I did was I just screenshotted the data sheet from the Dodge website. And now, whenever I use this model in the future or in the, as part of the design checking process, I can open this model up, open up the design binder, and verify the corresponding geometry in the plastic part uh, matches the design guidelines for the threaded insert. I hope you enjoyed this week's SOLIDWORKS video tutorial presented by the Demonic Group. Please subscribe to the Demonic Group on YouTube by clicking our logo on the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SOLIDWORKS icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SOLIDWORKS files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Demonic Group, Will It Fill It and Surfaces and Splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.